Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Fire Emblem AWAKENING! My name is NBZ, and this has been long awaited. I always said that I wanted to do a playthrough of Fire Emblem Awakening, but I didn't have the means at the time. You know, it's a 3DS game, it's tough to record unless you have the right hardware. And uh, this year, earlier this year, I purchased for myself a 3DS capture board and uh, managed to, uh, you know, have the ability to record 3DS games. So finally, here we are, just over a year later, I guess maybe a year and a few months later. Um, this game came out in Europe in April of 2013. Uh, very much delayed from the Japanese release, which was April of 2012. And uh, yeah, this game created by Intelligent Systems, um, a... Uh, a big title in the Fire Emblem franchise, and in a lot of people's minds, perhaps the best one. Um, perhaps the best one out there. So, let us uh, begin, shall we? Shall we uh, start this off? We're going to go for a new game. Now, I've uh, made some decisions here because, you know, I am wanting to play this game without having the trouble of, you know, not enough time to do it or not enough, you know, ability. I'm not going to play on normal. Normal is very easy in this game. I think, you know, if you say it's saying it's for serious beginners, and it really does mean that I played through it on normal on my first time, and uh, I didn't have much trouble at all. And of course, I played through two Fire Emblem games on my channel. I played through quite a few in my lifetime, and I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to go with hard. Now, the trade off here is that I am not going to be playing Fire Emblem the way that many people do and the way that it is supposed to be played, which is on classic. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be going with just newcomer mode. And the reason I do this is because the fact that I have a 3DS and I'm playing this game legitimately, not on an emulator like I did with Fire Emblem 7 and with Sacred Stones, um, I don't have the luxury of save states. Uh, you all recently saw I uploaded a video showing all the deaths that I had in Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, and uh, those were, you know, things that happened to me along the way, but I was okay because the thing with that game is that I could create a save state and I would be able to go back and refresh that part and I would only lose a maximum of about 20 minutes because each of my parts were 20 minutes and after each 20 minute segment I would create a save state so that if something happened in the next 20 minutes I could just cut it all out and start again from that point. That is not a luxury here and um, I really uh, would like to uh, be able to record and not have all my recording go to waste. So. I'm going to be playing the game very carefully, as I usually do. I'm going to try and not lose people, but you know what? When it comes down to the last turn and I randomly get critted on one of my main people, that's just a pain in the ass, right? And that means I have to do a whole new recording. So that is the reason why I'm doing Newcomer. It's not because I'm shirking. It's not because I think it's going to be easy. It's because for the sake of my sanity, for the sake of recording this game, and for the sake of you guys watching it, and for the consistency of it, I'm going to be doing that. So we are going to go with newcomer mode. Now, on to uh, our character creation. Of course, recently, the characters uh, for Super Smash Bros. Brawl, uh, not Brawl, for Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Wii U were updated, and they included this main character, whose name apparently is Robin. Now, I didn't know that, because I just always refer to this character as the Avatar character, the character you create at the beginning of the game, and is the character that you play as as your main unit. Um, now, obviously, in my first playthrough, I, I went through as a male, I just called myself NBZ and did that, but this time, I would like to see how the other half lives. So, I'm going to be playing as a female, and we're going to go with the female Avatar, and, uh, and do all this stuff. So, uh, let's... Uh, Wow, I guess they've got different builds here of just potential things you can look like. I think I'm just going to go with... Wait, is that just... Maybe I can, cha I can change hair and stuff independently. Huh. Alright then. Well, there are, there are a lot of hairstyles, as you can see. Um, hmm. Maybe if I go... Okay, this is interesting. They have separate builds for the separate hairstyles. Let me go back here, because I like that hairstyle. That's a good one, I feel. Um, that's one that I kind of like to go with. What are the other hairs here? Lots of different stuff we have. Uh, oh, I can do LNR to turn around. That's nice. I think I'm going to go with this hairstyle, maybe. Yeah. I mean, there's the pigtails. Uh, that, that could be quite cool. That could be cool. Um, could be alright. Let's check out the other ones, though. Let's have a look here. What do we got? Oh, we've got some decent options. That's pretty cool. It's a short-haired look. I, I want some long hair, though. Whoa, look at that. She has a bloom over the back there. That's not too bad. 
Uh, and this one. This one's actually quite good as well. I actually kind of like that one. You know what? I think I might go with this one. Uh, that seems pretty legit. Let's change the face up a bit. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, none of the alternate ones seem to really be taking my fancy, honestly. I think I like that normal face. That seems fine to me. Uh, this is where things come down to choosing, right? The hair color. What hair color are we going to go through? There are a lot of options here. We can go pink. Oh, man. I think last time my male avatar had purple hair. Now, the thing is, if you're going with a male avatar, the hair color does matter. It has an impact later on in the game. I'm not going to say any more than that because I don't want any spoilers going on. But the hair color does impact if you're the male avatar. If you're the female avatar, however, it really isn't a big deal. So you can kind of go with whatever you want. Um, just for her to look cool, I guess. Uh, I always like blue. Blue is one of those things. I'm having trouble deciding between the dark and the light. I think I'm going to go with this light blue. It's kind of turquoisey. That's a pretty cool hair color. I think I'm going to roll with that. And then, of course, we get to choose the voice. Because there is voice acting in this game. There's a limited amount of it in a lot of the dialogue scenes. And, you know, that means that I'm going to have to kind of work around doing my own voice acting. But we'll see how that goes. It's my fault. Hmm. We can do it. We can do it. Let's do it. All right. I think I'm going to go with the first one. That that kind of works for me. And uh, I guess that's that. That's going to be... Let's do a quick spin around. That's going to be my build for this uh, this playthrough. It's going to be my avatar. So let's go next. And uh, let's choose a name. So as you can see, the default is, of course, Robin. I never really paid attention to that, as I said. Uh, I'm just going to go straight up NBZ. Because I'm me, right? NBZ. I don't need to change any kind of gender stuff here. So that's that. And, uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Birthday. This is my real birthday. Let's teach everyone when my birthday is. I was born on the 13th of December. And this is an interesting area. This is where you get to choose your asset and a flaw. So all it basically means is one of these stats will be increased and one of them will be decreased. Think of it like natures in Pokemon where, for example, an adamant nature is going to boost your attack but you're going to lose special attack. That's kind of what we're going for here except with the avatar you kind of want both your attacking stats to be pretty good. So that's kind of the trade-off you're looking here what i'm going to boost is going to be my magic now i really like having the avatar character as a magic user primarily rather than a physical sword user because your other main character is a sword user and uses that mainly so i want to have magic as my main and then as my flaw i i never really know what to do here um a lot of the time I'll go with like luck or skill because I don't really understand what they do to be honest. I haven't really read up on them. Um, I'm just going to say ugh, we'll go with luck. We'll put luck as my flaw. It's not really a big deal to me honestly. Um, so we'll just go with that. And, uh, and there you have it. That is our avatar who we're going to be playing as throughout this game. So let's create a new save file. Obviously I don't want to delete my 50 hour file I have there when I played through this game. And, uh, and we're going to kick things off with uh, Premonition Invisible Ties. This is it. Our final battle. You're one of us, NBZ, and no destiny can change that. Now, let's kill this dastard and be done with it. Okay, so titles of relevant tutorials appear as alerts on the lower right of the 3D screen, and we can view them if we want, but I am a Fire Emblem veteran, I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to be using those. So, uh, I guess Listen this is going to tell us stuff. NBZ, we have to get closer. Let's move. All right, Krom. So this is Krom. He is the main character of this game, along with, you know, your main character, who is myself. And for some reason, we find ourselves in this dark, gloomy place, and, uh, I don't know, we're kind of just, we're, I guess, one enemy guy. He seems to be pretty evil. He's level 5. Doesn't think he can really match up to us. We're level 20 each. So, we should be pretty, uh, pretty easy to take this dude down. Now, here's an interesting thing. 
if you've played a Fire Emblem game before, then you know that there is the enemy kind of targeting area where you can see where they can move and where they can attack. That's really cool and uh, it, it's helpful, but you have to kind of click on each enemy to see what's happening. If you want to see everything, you can click X in this game and everything opens up. I do believe that this was an option in Shadow Dragon as well and the other DS game that didn't come out here. But holding X basically shows you every single area that the enemy can move in and uh, allows you to kind of plan your movements and say like this is a guaranteed 100% safe spot. It's really good shorthand and really helps you out in the early game and stuff like that. So uh, we're going to turn that off because I know where he's going um, and I am going to start moving my characters. So it is Krom's turn. Let's move him along, and uh, I guess we can check our items. What do we got? We have the Falcon, which is his main sword, and he has a silver sword, which is breakable. Interesting thing about the Falcon, it is a weapon that doesn't break. Now, there are not many of these in Fire Emblem games in general. Normally, all your weaponry, as you can see with the silver sword, has a limited number of uses, 30 in this case. Um, but the Falcon is one very special item there. So, we're going to wait here, and I'm going to pop my avatar uh, right next to Krom. Um, this basically will help eventually build up the relationship between the two of them and that's kind of what I want because my end game here is to marry uh, Chrome and the Avatar together and I'll talk about that in a, in a, in a little while. Um, obviously the, the stuff that I have as you can see I have my magic book Thoron and I have a steel sword and as I said before I decided to boost my magic meaning it's my more powerful unit um, or my more powerful stat. If you take a look down in the bottom screen you can see that the, my tome has a B next to it whereas my sword has a C next to it indicating of course that my magic is better than my uh, kind of sword skill. So uh, that's what I got Thorn and Steel Sword. Um, we can do some trades here but there's no point in doing that. Pairing up is something I'm going to talk about later but is very crucial and very important in this game. I'm just going to wait and uh, just have us both together. <laughs> Why do you resist? Oh, a very haunting guy he is. Good. He's almost within reach. Let's move in and strike. Alright. So, let's see how far we are. This actually works out pretty well. Um, Krom can go straight in and attack with the Falcon, And he can do yeah, pretty solid 12 damage. Silver Sword will actually end up doing more, which is relatively surprising. The Falcon is supposed to be a pretty powerful weapon, but we're going to do 18 with the Silver Sword. You can see he has 39 total. Um, and if we check here with uh, our main Avatar character, we're going to do Thoron 19 damage. And of course, I'm not far enough to approach him and do physical damage, but magic is one we want to attack him with. Um, so a combination of those two should be able to get the job done. But uh, not only that, if we go in and start off with Krom and attack here, uh, we'll see what happens after he's attacked. So let's do that. Let's have a look at the battle sequences. <laughs> Fools, struggle all you want. You cannot unwrite that which is already written. Well, here we go. Let's try and unwrite it if we can. Slice you down. Oh man, a whole 20 damage. Very powerful hit. Surprising at level 5. But then again, as we could tell, he is a sorcerer. A seasoned Dark Mage with Fearsome Magic. Which means he's an upgraded unit. And uh, apparently we are not. Uh, I didn't pay attention to that. I probably should have pointed that out, but I pointed it out now. Anyway, now that I'm right up next to Krom... I can perform an attack here, but it will not only be myself taking part in the battle. When character units in Fire Emblem Awakening stand next to each other, they are able to perform actions together. So hopefully, Krom will participate in this fight and uh, will hopefully be able to knock off the remaining HP. Because as we saw before, 19 damage, not quite enough at this point to take uh, Validar down. So we're going to go for it and we'll see, hopefully, uh, as you can see, both of us together in the same sequence. So I go for the hit. Is Krom going to attack for me? First, that attack misses. Ah, oh, it didn't happen there. Unfortunate, but it's okay. Now, it seems like at this point, he doesn't want to attack us. It is the beginning of the game. You know, that they're going to do that. They're going to make some weird choices like that within the, uh, um, the game engine. Um, so I'm going to move my character around here and attack from this angle. Uh, um, I, I could alternatively just finish it off with a steel sword. Let's try that. Let's uh, see the sword use here as well. Let's get some variety. All right. And with that slash, taken right down. Alright, and we have finished the stage. <laughs> the 
This isn't over. Can you pass? <laughs> you all right? That's the end of him. Thanks to you, we carried the day. We can rest easy now. At long last. What's wrong? Hey! Hey, look! <laughs> this is not your... your fault. Promise me you'll escape from this place. Please, go. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that sure was ominous. Uh, that is going to conclude the first part of Fire Emblem Awakening. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Next time, we're going to continue our journey and uh, hopefully get into the very beginning of the game. Uh, until then, thank you. Do leave a like if you enjoyed and comment on all the good commenty stuff down below. I'll see you next time. Till then, goodbye. <laughs>